The United Kingdom offers universal health care coverage through its National Health Service. The program is publicly funded, but the public isn't entirely happy with that system. In fact, almost 60 percent of Britons believe the system requires fundamental change. Kitty Pilgrim has our report. That's good. Go to a doctor in Britain. You won't have to pay when you leave. It's the same at the hospital. All health services are publicly funded by the National Health Service, funded by taxes. For that reason, a survey revealed only 2% of people in the UK who had a medical problem did not seek treatment because of cost. Peter Pitts of the Center for Medicine in the Public Interest, a nonpartisan research group, says the upside to the UK health system is universal coverage. What it really delivers today in the kind of the classic British tradition of muddling through is mediocre care for everybody. The British government sets the budget and is charged with determining what will and will not be paid for. Critics point out that cutting-edge drug treatments for Alzheimer's, cancer, and other severe conditions are often not included on the list of medicines that the government agency, known as NICE, will allow for reimbursement. Peter Pitt says it's a system that has real shortcomings. You can either accept kind of a one-size-fits-all healthcare system, which really doesn't fit anybody all that well, which is really terrific if you're not sick or, or you know, very sick. But once you have you know, cancer or advanced stages of lots of diseases and you really need cutting-edge medicine, you know, that system is really not equipped to provide it with excellence as ours is here. Other comparisons to the United States, the UK has male life expectancy of 77 years versus the US at 75. The UK spends a lot less per capita on health care, $2,992 a year versus $7,290 in the US. And overall, the country's health budget is only 8.4% of GDP versus 16% in the US. Doctors are about as plentiful. Now, a, a 2007 study found that 57 percent of the people in the U.K. said the system really needed significant overhaul. Some in the U.K. have decided to opt out of the national health system and pay for private medical coverage. It is available, but anyone taking on private medical care has to opt out of the national health system. So a telling point is, in the last decade, some British companies are actually offering private health care as a recruitment perk for their employees, Lou. Yeah, one of the things that is becoming crystal clear here, as we have reported now on Denmark and Canada uh, uh, and, uh, and now the UK, uh, this is not a simple issue. A and it really puts into stark contrast this idea of rushing through legislation when all of these other programs, we're only coming to terms with uh, a broad understanding of what uh, universal care and national health care really entails. Yeah, even the countries that have it are still trying to adjust it to meet the needs of, their, of the people that they're trying to cover. So it's, it really needs a lot of adjustment, a lot of tinkering, and, and we should not be rushing through. This is, uh, it's, it's fascinating and excellent reporting. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you. Kitty Pilgrim, and uh, we're going to be looking next uh, at...